Look fire, at you. Fire, Look fire, at you. Fire, 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 fire. You're on. I don't know what you're saying, though. Fire, fire. I was just thinking about uh, clacking off Claymores. And just, just hitting it. Yeah. What is your target, though? Whatever. I just want to daisy chain like 80 of them together and see what mm. happens. Like... In a side profile array, or are you talking about like a pile? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, <laughs> like, how are we daisy chaining these Claymores prob- together? Probably L shape, right? I don't you know. You would think. Why would. <laughs> it's a lot of ball bearings. Yes. What is that it? is two a lot pa- of ball it's, bearings. It's like two pounds what if you, of Semtex. See, what if you, you know how like back in the medieval times, like, you know, castles were specifically designed to where they could trap. You in that like yeah we still do it today. It's called you, a man trap. And you so when you go into pour. a when you go into a, a a secure facility, one door won't open until the other door is closed. It's called yeah. a man trap, right? Yeah. And they, it was invented so they could pour hot oil on yeah. you before. Yeah. Now we just like trap the guy there. So, so you can what him. if what if we did that where it, it's all clean? It was a steel corridor, mm-hmm. like a hard steel corridor, and then one wall was lined with claymores, so the balls bounced. Jesus so, Christ. So steel with angles. Well, in a closed, So the balls bounced with speed. In a closed room <laughs> like that, the concussive wave is going to kill the person anyways, probably, right? I mean, you've got a lot of things that are going to... Yeah. Not only are you Swiss cheese, but yeah, the, the, mm. the, the, the overpressure wave is going to bounce. Like, I, yeah, this you're is fucked. A, this is a concept I kind of want to see live to fruition. Like how would, I would like to see the autopsy. Do you still think... How do you determine what they died from? Torture devices are being developed... Is there somewhere in North does the Korea United and States China, for sure. government like are they is there creative people just developing torture devices? I don't I'm mean, you gotta imagine that uh they're working on tech now and not rudimentary shit like that, right? Yeah. So it's just not like DARPA's not making over a, there a like chair oh check this out, out and shit. this grabs your yeah. fingernails and no, I would instead so. they've got a little like a sound wave that just turns you inside out. Yeah. Like or turns you but, gay. But but like, what if you get turned inside out, but it was slow? Like it was like oh, two God. miles an hour. I mean, I don't think it's fun either way, but that would certainly suck. A- <laughs> like if you were able to make a miniature black hole and you could control the speed and yeah. in, in, in the gravity in which it, and then so, so yeah, I could, I, I, I turn you inside out over the course of five days. So it's just like every, every 10 minutes, it, it's there like was, one notch. There was this old Roman torture method where they would feed terry cloth down your throat. And like drip water down your throat, so it would go further Stick and further to your down. Stomach, right? It would, yeah. Your esophageal lining would grow over the top of it, and then the top of your stomach would grow over the top. And then they would slowly. They had a little, uh, like a wheel, wheel that would turn, and it would slowly pull it out over time. Hmm. In Roman, in first century Rome, the the Roman Empire, a uh, confession didn't count unless torture was involved. Like your oh, confession, wow. like even if somebody said, "Hey, I murdered him. Sorry, like st- sorry, I still got to torture you. Otherwise, it doesn't count." So. <laughs> That's pretty cool, I guess. What do you? What is your? What is your most? What do you think is the the most gruesome uh, form of medieval torture? I would have to say it's the one where they put a glass rod up the guy's dick hole and smashed it with a hammer. Yeah, but I mean, that's pretty rough. At the end of the day, you're you're only looking at an appendage that could be about this long. Like, there's only so much. Like, a, you know, cutting it off at that point. Yeah. Like, like, do you really think that's the worst? I don't. They also put uh, dudes in stocks and then put female horse pheromones on their asses and left them with stud horses. I still think like you gotta you like gotta peeling the skin off is probably about, the worst. Yeah, you gotta but think you gotta, about you have time. To, you have to be able to like, do something that doesn't put them in like shock. Raped too, though, right? by a horse, that's quick. That's, that's gonna yeah. be. Well, you've seen the video, right? Yeah, yeah, Mr. Hands. Mr. Hands. I remember yeah. that one. I, that was, uh, I heard that took place in Washington, actually. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Um, uh, probably in the eastern side of the but state. But like, yeah, yeah, time like. Like, you know, uh, was it Apache or Comanche Indians used to bury you up to your neck? And, and then, then the ants, yeah. And the ants. Yeah, like, I wonder that if... That would be misery because it would take so... Like, because first there's dehydration no, like, there's would no happen. Blunt, there's no blunt force or shock. So you're... If well, you don't, you're going to go into shock. You're, you're going to have some form of shock. From exposure, but yeah. probably after like a couple of days. Well, as they're continued to just yeah. like ants, like... Yeah. Like, oh, uh, that you would know, be the key. That would the key would be God, keeping people be, out of shock. Like, even if you had to give them like little, but I think, I think dehydration would set in first, like, because yeah. the, the venom and the, and just the, the constant biting of the ants yeah. and 
like your that white would blood send cell you, you would, you, your heart rate would elevate yeah. and it would stay that way. Yeah. So your, your temperature would go up. So you, I think you would sweat and you would, you would dehydrate probably first in, in the ant thing before, probably or before you died enough ants are biting you. You get you, even if you're not allergic, anaphylactic yeah. shock is, is still, he, see, I'm, I'm super like the brazen bull, cr- like makes my skin crawl. I don't know because, what that is. Because I kind of like with these torture devices, mm. I put myself in the situation and like I think about how how much you could tolerate how it starts out. Yeah. The brazen bull is the giant uh you know, brass bull that you they put you inside and then oh, and they, they heat it up or what? They, they there's a fire under it. So essentially, yeah, you're cooking off brass. So it's like as that fire gets going, like eventually that brass gets too hot to touch. So yeah. you're stuck in this, in this thing that's conducting heat, by the way. So <laughs> as you're, you're like bent over in there cause you're crammed in. So like your back and your neck and your head is touching it and you're sitting on it. Was your this hands. meant to be torture or to kill the person? It, oh, kill. So they don't pull you out at some no, point? No, no, because no, no, Because the no. one with the rat and the, and the metal container on your stomach or whatever. That's a heat kill. Up, that, it is kill, but you can use it for torture too. But then there's the, uh. The one that's definitely for killing was, I think it was medieval. It was, uh, you put a guy in a burlap bag with a fucking dog, a snake. Oh yeah. You throw it in the water. A dog, a snake, and what else? A monkey. Oh yeah. Yeah, It was a dog, snake, and a monkey. And toss it in the water. Yeah. You just throw it in the water and see what happens. Oh God. Like, unfortunately that came about before the GoPro. Cause then you, (laughs) I just want to see how it all goes down. You know what? You bring up a very interesting point though, because like, you think of the Spanish Inquisition, like yeah. I've always wondered, like a, a person whose job it is to be down in the catacombs, just killing people yeah. all day long by really weird and crazy. Like, 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 do you show up every day and they're like, here's the lot today. There's 10 of them. We got to yeah. get through. And it's like, whatever you feel like, like, yeah. and then what is that dude when he comes home? Does he like hang up his apron and his, yeah. and, and, and his, and his hat? Well, and like even sit down at dinner with his wife and kids. There was uh, Martin Luther, not not the one that started the church, but the guy that was part of the Nazi Party, right? Uh, was the only there? There was a that final solution meeting that happened right before the trains really started going to the concentration camps. And one of the guys there, Martin Luther is the guy that accidentally leaked all the documentation from that meeting because it was all supposed to be burned. So that's how we know about it. Yeah. <clears throat> but. There was a major, an SS major, I can't remember his name that was there. And he was the only person at the meeting reporting to people uh, uh, that it was having a huge impact on morale to just be murdering women, even from the Nazis, right? To, to be murdering women and children all the time. What they were doing to save ammunition was they would tie a husband and wife together and shoot one of them and throw them into the water, right? To save bullets. Wow. So he was like, yeah, that doesn't feel like very soldiery to do that. And it's really starting to affect my men. And uh, Heydrich was just like, I don't care. Fuck you. Heydrich and Ike do in that meeting. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, ultimately they started showing them the pictures. That's where they, that's where a lot of the fucking people first learned about concentration camps, even mm-hmm. inside the Nazi party. Wow. Yeah. Well, welcome to Crazy. the show, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that's a good kicking, cold open. Kicking Jesus this Christ. off with some torture. The fuck? This is a special episode today. It's our who's who in the zoo with Mr. Dan Holloway. Mm-hmm. Welcome. Yeah, we've no. known each other for a long time. Do have we? I thought this was our first. What year first is this? Twenty twenty one. We've 20, known each other for fifteen years. That's it. That's it. You're, yeah. I think uh, you're the person that I'm still in contact with, other than my brother that I've known the longest. And you, I think Dave is probably the only person involved in all our shit that you've known longer than me because you went to high school with him, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be it. Yeah. Where did it start? You grew up in South Carolina. <laughs> Yeah, I grew up in near Clemson. Uh, uh, you know, it was a it was weird. My parents weren't great. My dad was abusive, and I talk openly about that now because I feel like people need to. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's too many I mean, people. There's too many people suffering. Like I'm I'm past it now, but I feel like if you get to a point in your life where you've overcome something and you don't help other people overcome it, you're kind of a piece of shit. To be honest, yeah. like that's your job as a human being is to pass on your lessons to other people. Well, I think it's also too like uh, letting. Letting people know they're not the only one. Right. I mean, I think. And that there's options. Yeah. Right. It's a very weird, it's a very weird time now. Like, you know, it almost, uh, it almost seems like some people too recently have jumped on this, jumped on the train to use it to 
sell for clout. Yeah. Yes, it's, yes. It's, that's it's like, like buy my book. I talk about it. It like, yeah. like it's like, yeah, it's irritating. Yeah, it, it gets, but it is what it, it is. Pretty I mean, weird. If, if yeah. that's how what they have to do to reach catharsis, that's fine. I'm not gonna hate on anybody for it, but don't. That's not a being having been treated poorly is not an identity trait. That is something that almost every human being deals with to some degree or another. I mean. Yes. Yes. It's not as it's not as violent sometimes, or as uh, uh, frequent, or whatever, or as extreme. But everybody deals with it to some degree. Is, he, is your dad still alive? Uh, yeah. Do you even know where he is? I don't care. Yeah. Because you don't, you don't like your think, mom either. Uh, You've never liked your mom. She's uh, she's better than him. But like, yeah. I, it's it's a it's a <laughs> difficult situation because I I have a hard time rationalizing someone watching all that go down and not stepping into doing something. The yeah. only person. The only adult human being in my life that ever defended me was my grandmother, actually. Uh, she was a semi-professional basketball player, like in the 30s. Wow. And worked in When people actually watched women play yeah, basketball. Yeah, yeah. They no, thought they it was don't. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she, she worked in tech. So she played in textile leagues, kind of like the yeah. same thing that Shoeless Joe Jackson, the baseball leagues he played yeah. in in South Carolina. She played in the basketball version of that at the Pretty same cool. time that he was playing baseball, actually. Um, <laughs> uh, and then... Uh, uh, yeah, she, she pretty much told him one time, like, Hey, you're not going to do that shit over here. Like, get the fuck out of here. Like she yeah. let, she let him up and there was a rift I and mean, I didn't go back over there. I wasn't allowed back over there for a while. Well, you know, that. that's a lot more common than, I mean, people really know Yeah, the, the it is, yeah. one in the household abuse will be ignored Yeah, uh, it will. and, and even covered for. Yeah. We well, because it's embarrassing. You know what I mean? And people don't know how to deal with it because no one ever talks about it. So that, that's how good ideas don't get exposed in a vacuum. That's why cancel culture is so poisonous. Bad ideas get exposed by good ideas. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is how it is. Anyways. Good ideas can be, can, can, can come out of bad ideas. Have, Someone trying to execute happens. a bad idea, you yeah. can, you then modify, yeah. oh, wait, this was horrible. Right. But if we did this, this would work. work. Yeah. That's how it, that's how it always happens. I don't, I don't know, understand why people have such a, uh, 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 romantic viewpoint on being correct about things because we're all wrong before we're right about every single thing forever. Yeah. Before you learn what is right, you're wrong about it. Well, I think, I think just in our day and age with social media, media in general, mm. TV, the news, the being radio, first is everything, more important than being right, being right. But also too, clicks is more important than uh, being right. <laughs> I think, I think people have just, we've, we've gone backwards in a level of consciousness. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like, yeah, like people, now it's, it's <laughs> yeah. it, it, you know what I mean? It, like, we, we've gone from not having access to information to having access to all, all the information, information. right? I, what, what we've done with it is awful. Yeah. We had Neil deGrasse Tyson on about a month ago and he said, we've got smartphones and dumb people. And I'm like, it's <laughs> probably why he's got a PhD. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, that's how it is. We're, we, we've got all this information. We're not smarter for it because we still haven't figured out how to think instead of what yeah you know what i mean like people people are inundated with like you should believe this this and this that's what political parties are the republicans have this list of what 12 things the democratic party has their list of 12 things and they're intrinsically tied to those parties for some reason but that's not how life works and no other yeah but that's how that's how it works to get people to organize inside you have to Correct. give them you have to convince them that they're that this is right yeah. that way it gives them a, a reason to pit against the others. Right. No, you're right. And it's, you, and you know, it's, <laughs> it's a, it, but it's a logical fallacy. It's the same. It's begging the question. So you, you, you start to believe that something is something, right? And maybe it is at that time, but then it evolves and it's no longer that, but you're still operating off the premise that it is that, for example, that the left is not war hawkish and they certainly are now, right? And you, you can hear people talking about it. Russell Brand was just talking about it yesterday on his Instagram page <clears throat> uh, about how my views haven't really changed. I'm still for justice and fairness and kindness and stuff like that. But I find myself more and more aligning with people on the right now. Why is that the case? And he's just trying to unpack yeah. why it is. And it's just cyclical. I mean, people get in power and they feel like their power is being taken away and that's all they care about. So they try to guard their power however they can, whether it's through manipulation or, or some kind of fight or whatever it is. It's and a it, false sense of power yeah. too. And it's it, all, it's all a created it's all sense. The it's only fake. reason, yes, the only reason politicians sense. have powers because we allow yeah, them to. We, 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 like, that's it. we submit to it yeah. of someone says that is a congressman and we just go, Oh, I have to listen to them. Right. No, yeah. I don't. It's like that a fucking, is just another person. No, like, it's like a it's like a whale trainer at SeaWorld. Like I mean, you are it, not in control of that situation, yeah, I promise Julius you. Julius Caesar is a prime example. Like 
when his senators decided that they all could get together and just stab him. Yeah. All that of a sudden it. he was dead. Yeah. So powers, power is a weird construct, but it's, you know, I mean, really all power lies behind weapon, a weapon. Yeah. All, the United States power lies behind 1600 nuclear weapons. Like, and, uh, 400, uh, million guns that, uh, <laughs> no gen- one knows where they are. <laughs> gen- General Hirohito in world war two, uh, when asked about an, an, a ground invasion of America, he said, no one will ever launch a ground invasion against America because there will be a rifle behind every blade of grass. Right. <laughs> and he's got, I mean, he's fucking right. That's, that's how it is. Yeah. Here. But sadly that, uh, that, that fruition of that fact has led to a very spoiled population it has, it has yeah. never faced occupation or yeah. real oppression yeah and well, we talked now about they've it. manufactured oppression we've talked about it last year we call it oppression fomo oh yeah like people fear of missing out on oppression yeah like these these skinny white kids from from seattle that have never from faced rural, any real there's a lot of people i grew up with like yeah. there's a there's a big handful of people that have never left the borders of Washington state, but right. have such <clears throat> convicted opinions. Yeah, you it's, know? it's absolute nonsense. I mean, I, I the, the ultimate, uh, uh, insult. People don't understand that. what it is to where, when security is not absolute. That's the right, biggest yeah. thing. Yeah. That's where I think this yeah. comes down is, is, is what we see today is Americans, especially with the internet. Mm. They, they feel security is absolute yeah. and they don't, they, and it's, they, 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 they operate and conduct yeah. themselves in a, in the vacuum that you can't hurt me and I can do and say whatever I want. Correct. Yeah. And the, the reason that it worked for so long is because everybody was on board. Everybody knew that, yes, we can do what we want under this fucking umbrella, but it's upon all of us. The responsibility is upon all of us to make sure the um, umbrella stays upright. Yeah. And now people are just mooching off of that system and not giving back to it. As a matter of fact, they're attacking the institutions that protect it, like police and masculinity and things like that. It's nonsense. Yeah. doesn't make any sense, you know? So I, I just, I, I've seen these blubbering like 22 year old white women uh, uh, on the street during protests and stuff, walking up to like a fucking 45, 50 year old black man that has experienced real racism, racism in his yeah. life and just blubbering and unloading how they feel about his plight onto him while he's <laughs> trying to get out of the street and make some change. Do you know how insulting that is? Yes. yes. Like get the fuck it's out. That's like, like if, if lunacy, that's like, if you're, uh, uh, one of your kids got hurt or something and I lost my shit over it. Or while you're someone else to wants to talk about uh, how much war affected me. And yeah, me. like, hey, exactly, can you dude. chill, please? Like, just <laughs> leave yeah. me alone about it. It doesn't like, make any sense. So it, that's, we've always had a very keen sense of justice, you and I. It's, it's, I think it's one of the we've, reasons. We've been very middle forever. Yeah. Like very, very fair, mm. very general. Like, and that's, well, let's let's get back to you. Yeah. So that's we what, can get to this towards the yeah, end. The but. reason I brought that up <laughs> yeah. is because when I was a kid, I experienced only injustice, right? And there's a number. You had of, a lot of racism down there too, South oh, Carolina sure, in yeah, the yeah. late '80s yeah. and early '90s. Yeah. You still had it, yeah, for sure. And I grew up in a black neighborhood. I was the only white kid there until I was, I think, eleven or twelve. I've always said my minority is is really about is really about location. It's about service. You can be yeah. you can be a minority. <laughs> Just by changing location. If we right. go to, to South Central, I, I'm now the minority right. and their culture is the majority. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's, so a, what was I like? it's, it's interesting. So it's, I mean, it was, it was interesting. So I was, uh, I'm a bit, uh, Aspie, you know what I mean? Asperger. So it was more difficult when I was a kid. I wasn't ever nonverbal. I mean, people don't, people misunderstand what autism is. It's, uh, an inundation of information, right? So if, you, if you've ever had one of those headaches where your ears are ringing and you can't think, it kind of feels like there's too much data coming in. Some people, it's only a specific amount of, or a specific type of data, right? So it's filter the, it. the ability to play the violin. And they're amazing at that, but they can't do it. They can't function other than that. They can just do that. They're a savant. Some people, it's so bad, they're just nonverbal and they can't do shit. Some people, like I was relatively high functioning, but it was still uh, under the duress I was in it was very difficult to understand where my place was in the world. And since this has been a topic on your show lately, <clears throat> what I did, I just happened upon, I went to the library a lot because I obviously I'd like to read. So uh, I happened upon, I was researching autism because I kind of figured out it, that seems like what some of my uh, symptoms may have been. And I happened upon this uh, Israeli medical journal study 
uh, from the University of Jerusalem. I think it was in 58, they did it. They were using LSD to treat the symptoms of autism, right? They didn't know why it was working at the time, but really what it was doing is what you talked about with Ibogaine is remapping. Like your, your brain is the interstate highway system and they're basically just re, you're remapping it. That's all it is. Yeah. I mean, that's reductive to some degree because there's a lot of physiological things that happen there, but that's essentially what, it, what was happening. <clears throat> so I started experimenting with it at 11 years old. How, I was just going to say, yeah. how old were you? So 11 years old, you yeah. come across a book from a Jerusalem Medicine Journal. Uh, yeah, it was a medical journal from uh, the university. It was a study done by the University of Jerusalem. So then at 11 years old, how do you find LSD? Well, I had an older brother. Okay. You know, so <laughs> talk to his friends and there were a bunch of hippies in my area for yeah. some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's, I actually don't know why, but there are a lot of people that were super into that stuff around there. So I started doing that. I did it a lot. I mean, before I graduated like, high school. Do you remember your first one at 11 when you finally got a hold of it? Uh, yeah, I just, it, it was, I only took a little bit yeah. and I felt body stuff and I could feel my brain felt different, but it wasn't like a super hard one. Yeah. I kind of gradually up the dosage over time. And then I got to a point where I was just taking like seven to 10 hits at a time. You know yeah. what I mean? Because there's, a, there's no overdosing on LSD. It doesn't work that way, which is another thing I figured out. Well, yeah, we can dive into that as well, because I asked these questions when I was with all the doctors during my Ibogaine trip was, you know, I was brought up in the nineties and or were you were taught you were going to turn into fucking orange juice or some dumb no, shit that, like that? No, uh, that LSD attaches to your spinal oh, cord. Yeah. That, that's what we were taught. LSD Dude. attaches to your spinal yeah. cord and eats your brain stem. If you, do any, if you do more than three hits of acid in your lifetime, you're, you're considered clinically insane. Clinically insane. Yeah, here, all these are myths. All I'm, these were propaganda from the yeah. United States government. But it's no different than fucking reefer madness. Did you ever watch that stupid shit? Mm -mm. The government made a documentary, or it's actually a, a short film called reefer madness to scare people away from weed really back in the 50s it's hilarious so these high school kids this still exists you oh, can watch it on, it on youtube it's on youtube yeah it's free you can watch it right now <laughs> how long uh, is it uh i mean i don't remember look <laughs> can you look that up and see how long uh, it is? i mean <laughs> uh, yeah it's it's hilarious but the premise basically is these kids uh high school kids start hanging out with older people to party or whatever the fuck and then one very shady clearly violent dude starts bringing <laughs> weed around like yeah. there's no yeah. violent so, weed. so again this is all propaganda yeah. this is nonsense. all <laughs> uh so uh he starts bringing weed around they all start smoking weed and then the the shady dude fucking shoots somebody <laughs> or something like that and just reefer madness <laughs> reefer it'll madness. make you insane like get the fuck out of here people have been smoking yeah, but this, this shit. that was messaging yeah people that have was... been smoking weed for fucking like six thousand years man if it caused insanity, we would know by now. I'm pretty sure. Shit. Dude, but we all know why. We yeah, all well, know. I mean, originally why. it was the timber industry. Hour and eight minutes. Yeah. Was, yeah. Joe, Joe Rogan did a good bit on this fucking years ago. Just talking about how the timber industry was competing against hemp and they lobbied Congress to fucking make weed illegal. And ever since then, they had to justify why it was illegal. Why it was illegal. Especially after prohibition got overturned. They had to keep justifying why these fucking drugs were legal. Remember, and MDMA then, was legal in the United States until 1988. Really? Yeah. You could buy MDMA or you could get a prescription for MDMA from your doctor until 1988. So they we've just, known about They just threw it forever. into schedule one because yes. they didn't care. Because they were like, and that's what it is. They don't no, care. It was, no. all right, make all these illegal. Yeah. I mean, it's easier for them to do that than it is to actually research things. Then, but this is my thing. Same thing with psilocybin, mushrooms and all this stuff is, you, you know, right now in the United States, we are allowed seven days a week to drive to the store and purchase a synthesized drug in as much quantity as we want. Right. And we can drink as much of it as we want. A, a, a synthesized fucking liquid yeah. that kills our brain cells, yeah. impairs our judgment, impairs motor function, everything like yeah. that. That's perfectly fine. But this over here, oh no, you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. Oh, would, oh, that? No, no, I'd no, no. You're see, not allowed to do that. I'd love to see the uh, body count from weed and alcohol stacked next to one another. You're talking about heart disease and uh, cirrhosis and can other forms of Liver cancer, cancer. Uh, pancreatic cancer, Throat cancer, like all this stomach stupid cancer. shit. And then fucking people dying in accidents or whatever the fuck yeah. else. Violence. So much stuff. Yeah. And it's, you know, it is what it is. And I'm not I like trying to be a proponent for people. If you don't like, doing if you don't want to smoke weed or if you don't want to do some of this other stuff or if you don't feel like you need to then don't do it i don't give a shit yeah. i'm not a goddamn i'm not going to proselytize people for it 
I just think that the stereotype that people that use these kind of things are fucking losers or whatever the fuck. Go read Stealing Fire by uh, Stephen Kotler. And he goes over how uh, Larry Craig and Sergey Brin and all these guys, they, cho- they were choosing their fucking C-level employees for Google by taking them to Burning Man. Right. They were, that was their interview. There was no fucking office interview where you're like, oh, yeah. your resume looks good. No, they took them to fucking Burning Man <laughs> to make sure that it was a vibe check, basically. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's what the it's kids like, call it these days. What is this? What is this? What is yeah. this person about? So, anyways, but the I thing st- is, is, it's a hypocritical, well, not hypocritical, but it's a construct <laughs> that, again, we were taught yeah. and then we just jump on board with the mindset. And of, people never thought to challenge it. No. Right. Until relatively recently. recently. I mean, yeah. I, I was invited to a study at Stanford in 2013 for uh, MDMA and psilocybin research into post-traumatic stress and stuff like that. Wasn't able to go, but I heard it went really well. They were doing sleep studies and all They're kinds of other stuff. They're doing study right now. They Stanford are now, is, yeah. Yes, Finally. Yes. I mean, Jesus Christ. But, um, you know, it's, it's a good thing. So I, I happened to do all of this stuff on my own like almost 30 years ago. So at what point, yeah, because I know a lot about you. What when did sense. you start making your own? Can you look up with the statute of limitations on manufacturing? Actually, no, that that got that got dropped already, so I can't be charged with that again. Uh, <laughs> I guess I started experimenting with it when I was seventeen. I originally saw some stuff in the in the anarchist cookbook, but it was all nonsense, right? That yeah. like some of that stuff is interesting, but most of it is is bunk. Uh, but then I actually started looking into it, and you would be surprised in the late nineties what you could find on the internet. Yeah, like everything it was there was no unregulated. yeah there was no regulation back then. So right after I got out of high school, I was in seminary, right? Yeah, you went to studying tr- seminary. Explain this for- real quick. quick. Well, so what led you on that path? Number I was, one. So in high school, I, I played baseball. I was pretty good at it. Uh, kind of lost interest in it. Like, I don't, this is all vanity. People are just standing around looking at themselves in the mirror all the time. Like, look how good I am. Like, who gives a fuck about that shit? And I don't like attention that much either. Like, it's because of the, I, I know it's weird to say that considering what I do for a <laughs> I don't like attention. I'm your host today, yeah. but I don't like attention. But I really don't like you. You can see me. Anybody that's come to any of our live events over the years or that knows me personally knows that I'm kind of reserved. Uh, I'm not like, like hi, huge, nice, yeah. great. See you yeah. later. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that all that stuff is what it is, but I didn't like the attention from it. So kind of moved on from that. I was like, all right, what am I going to do now? I wanted to do something that was interesting and that mattered, but I didn't feel like I was prepared to make that decision at the time at 18 years old. I don't think anybody is. So I was like, all right, well, I, the, what, what can I learn about that makes the most sense? I had spent so many years learning about human behavior by trying, I mean, when you're different like that, you just try to mimic everybody else because you don't want to stand out. Right. Mm-hmm. But then you start wondering, I wonder why they did this or why they did that. And what it, what, what it taught me was that people are afraid. They're, they're afraid of everything. They're afraid of failure, of being embarrassed. They're uh, anxious about the future. Uh, they feel like they're not in control and all this stuff. And they make that there's that phrase, uh, hurt, hurting people, hurt people or hurt people, hurt people, whatever it is. Um, I think that scared people do as well. You know what I mean? It's, it's, yeah. it's your fight or, fight or flight mechanism, but it's in a social environment, right? So you're angling against people and you're fucking saying stuff that are half truths. Or, or you're trying to fuck somebody over before they fuck you or whatever it is, right? It just manifests itself in a bunch of different ways. So I had spent a lot of time understanding how humans think. And I was like, all right, cool. So now I need to see what that looks like in history. And I don't think there's any better way to study history than to study religion, right? So I studied comparative religion. Mm-hmm. This made sense to me at the time. And then I decided I was going to join the army after that. Yeah, well, and, how long was that? It was four years almost, wasn't it? Yeah. So I was 24 when I joined. So, so, so you went through four years of seminary, but you but studied went, every different, like major religion, yeah. religion yeah. right? So yeah. you, you went through the Quran, you went yep. through Mormons, mm-hmm. you went through all I mean, of, a lot of ancient was, stuff too. You don't touch as much on some of the ancient stuff, but it was a feeder program like Buddhism and Hindu for sure. What'd but you even, find? Uh, I found that people by and large believe the same shit, the golden rule, right? Uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you exists in every major piece of religious literature that exists. So do you feel like, like after doing all this study, do you feel like, you know, the King James Bible or the most widely, you know, 
disseminated form of Christian faith or whatever you would call it in the United States is literally just a hodgepodge of historical <clears throat> religions that we just yeah. put together and said, it's kind of like this one's English, good. It's kind of like the English language. Like we just <laughs> yeah, took we a just, bunch of pieces from other stuff and put it in there. Like Mithras is yeah, Mithras, Jesus, uh, you know. And it existed, what, 2,500 to 6,000 years prior to? Yeah, something like it, that. It was an Egyptian god yeah. born of a virgin right. and uh, the whole, yeah, yeah Mithras. And we, we, I actually but there's also to, 65 plus different different uh, religions and things that, that mirror the Christian faith, correct? Right. Yeah. Like that predate it. That mirror the exact same thing. Right, and there's a bunch that came, like Mormonism is basically a rip off of that too, right? So this, that's just how it happens. People hover, gravitate around the same general premises. They just assign different values to certain things. Or do, did certain people use, in certain time periods, use this as a form of, of gaining power and leadership? Well, Constantine certainly did, but it, like, it's, that's a chicken or egg situation. A lot of people uh, talk about like how Constantine converted Rome into Christianity so he could use it for power, but really it was already happening. It was becoming wildly popular. Yeah. And he was just like, all right, I better and jump on board this train before he, I get fucked he up. He organized. You know I mean? Explain the organization of that. Like, oh, well, like what happened? Because like, a lot of people don't understand this. Right. 321 AD, correct? Uh, 336. 336. Council of... Uh, Council of Nicaea. Uh, yeah. Sorry. I'm getting uh, the right date. Yeah. yeah. No, I was... Uh, yeah. Just, so it's the Council of Nicaea, 336 AD. And this is another chicken or egg situation. People who are anti-religion will say that they just had a vote and randomly selected which books were going to be in the Bible and which weren't. In reality, they just canonized things that were already in wide circulation, right? But there were some weird ones like the Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel of Mary. The Gospel of Mary tells an entirely different story about yeah. Mary Magdalene's relationship with Jesus. It's mentioned in that I hate to even mention it, but Dan Brown's stupid fucking uh, Da Vinci code bullshit. It, yeah. All that is nonsense. And I, I like how they're uh, one of the big pieces of evidence from that whole thing is the Last Supper painting. And they're like, look at what you do with this. That was a painting that was done 1,500 fucking years after the dude died. Later. It's not evidence. It's not like somebody took a picture. See? No. I mean, <laughs> anyways, uh, I just think... Uh, Back to all that. I the, think that. The Council of Nicaea. Yeah, council we're going down this because so many people don't know this. Yeah. <laughs> like, and this so, is one of the first things I learned from you back in the day. Yeah, a bunch of, a bunch of uh, government people and religious scholars got together from all over the world and decided what was going to be included in the Bible and what wasn't. And that's Ooh. why the Catholic Bible has more the apocryphal books, as Protestants call it. And it's, it tells some different stories. There's some different values assigned and things like that. But really, I think it's all pointless in so far as the the entire bible is in my opinion was designed to show what a good man looks like yeah. you know what i mean hey, hey, like this jesus is... was a good man yeah. like he when, when everybody else was shunning this prostitute he was like hey she's a fucking person just like you you're saying you don't do fucked up shit sometimes yeah. fuck you dude when uh, uh 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 people were utilizing the church to uh to do fucking shady financial deals he went over there he's like fuck you guys and flipped the goddamn table over right like we have this idea of jesus <laughs> as some meek character but really he was a thought leader uh uh if, if he indeed existed i don't know if he existed do you believe he existed i've never seen any evidence for it but it, the romans are some of the best historians ever and they don't have any evidence yeah because isn't isn't the first his trial or any the, of that stuff the book the 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 closest book to his life is like a generation and a half after about yeah, he's the first time done. the first time he's ever mentioned anything that isn't the Bible is in Antiquities by Flavius Josephus, uh, who was a first century Jewish historian. But it, it's some people think that it was it's at the end of a paragraph, yeah. which is kind of weird. Yeah, but it why wouldn't this be a why wouldn't this be a whole thing? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> but maybe it wasn't a big enough movement at that point. I, it seemed like it was, but maybe it well, wasn't. I don't know. So I don't. I don't, I don't really. So care again, wasn't the first. The first task in the Council of Nicaea, like, didn't didn't Constantine tell all these scholars to write down their grievances and throw them in a basket? And yeah, so it was to get everybody on on a level playing field or something like that. Yeah, and then more or less, it's just it, I mean, it was that it was a data collection yeah. experiment. You know what I mean? Because everybody threw it in the fire, didn't he? Yeah, he was like, "Now we're done." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it was weird the way the whole thing happened, but look, it was certainly controlled. I, I just think that. Uh, I, I don't personally believe in any of this stuff, but I think that the, I think they're extreme. I think this story of Jesus is an extremely good story. I just think that it's been taken the wrong way as, as a, uh, like a God figure. I think it's more important to 
I, I, let's say it's all real. Jesus was God. The dying for the sins thing, none of that stuff makes any mechanical sense to me. But him being an example of what a person looks like, like a, what a good human being looks like, makes a lot of sense to me, actually. Yeah. Uh, Gandhi used to say, I, I'd love uh, your, uh, what did he say? I love your Christ, but not your Christians. They, they don't act like him or something. I can't remember, I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. But he said, I, I, your Christ, I, I, can you look that fucking quote up? Gandhi quote about Jesus. I don't know what it is. Anyways. Um, yeah, I think it's to, to circle back to all Gandhi. this, like Jen Saki, uh, we, we're, we're, like Jen we're trying to figure out why we exist. Like why? Like if, if life was perfect all the time, we wouldn't care, but life is very, yeah, very, very brutal very challenging, sometimes. Challenging, brutal. Yeah. So we want to like, what, what is all this hard work for yeah. exactly? How does it go? Yeah, I like your wow. Christ, but not your Christians, I think, is what he actually said. Uh, they're so unlike your Christ, I believe, is what he said. And that, that isn't to say, I mean, look, I, I just think that's the whole point of the New didn't, Testament, at least. Didn't fourth century Romans, like, openly practice orgies and homosexuality and things like that? Well, the Greeks were more into the gay shit, but, um, yeah, I mean, first shit. I mean, Rome, the Roman Empire was... I'm just curious, you know, because I've always, wild. I've always kind of chuckled at the people that use Christianity to, to oppose homosexuality or gay marriage. And it's like, mm, you know, the people that gathered all those scrolls and wrote your book, right? <laughs> yeah, I, it's here. Here's, and, here's, and if it was so important, why wasn't it a commandment? Yeah. You here, know, why is it just a footnote in a couple passages, like right. in what Leviticus? Yeah. Where, where is it in the New Testament? Uh, there is some mention of yeah, but it's just manly a, with a man or some yeah, shit like that. But yeah, but that could be a translation error. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, could be. Well, Sodom and Gomorrah got destroyed. A lot of people believe it's because um, they were rude to the two angels, right? They tried to rape the two angels and, and then Lot gave them his daughters instead or offered them his daughter, which is kind of weird. That's a weird story. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> is this one of the stories that mentions it? Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. So, but, but, Forget about all that. This is all really simple. It's the same as pork, right? Yeah. So pork, swine, whatever you're going to call it back then, you could not keep it fresh so it would poison the shit out of you. If it was over a day old, you would die, right? And leaders figured this out. And then in Leviticus, it says, don't eat pork, right? Just telling because you, you'll no, die. There's, there's no, no refrigerator. They didn't know how to salt it. They didn't know how to refrigerate it at the time, right? So move forward to the first century where you're in a population war. You have to outbreed your opponents. That's the only way as a small organization, you can grow to be a big one. You can't use force because you don't have it, right? Have it. So, and it's what- We uh, don't have technology. No, it's what the, yeah. the, uh, the uh, a lot of the, uh, the thousand year Muslim plans, right? Involve way less violence and way more procreation and immigration, right? Because they want to fucking, and it's, it makes sense. Why wouldn't you do it? But, if that's the case, if it is imperative to make as many people as possible, you got to keep them alive and keep them alive. Having two dudes or two women together doesn't help that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there's like, all right, we'll just make gay illegal because yeah. up until that point, it was common. Yeah. I mean, there, there are some theories that, uh, 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 what's his name? Julius Caesar had a relationship with, uh, with, the guy that went on, his nephew that went on to become Augustus Caesar, yeah. right? Uh, but he certainly did have some gay relationships, I believe, in his life. I think there's documentation to that effect. It was common. No one cared, right? Yeah, it wasn't a thing. It wasn't, there was no, sex wasn't bound to morality in any way. It was just something he did for fun. I mean, it, think about it this way. And it, we've now done that in the last 300 years. Yeah, it's like stupid. Bound it's it Puritans, to morality. Right? It's Puritans. The Puritans oh, didn't yeah. uh, come to America to escape England. England kicked them the fuck out. Really? Yes. Ooh, let's talk about this. Well, I mean, that's just, I just told you about it. I don't it. know it. about it. Yeah. It's, it's, these people were so hardcore. They were basically like. So they were a cult. <laughs> a cult. Yeah, more or less. <laughs> Church of England wasn't too thrilled about it. So they were like, hey, you know what? Why don't you guys just get the fuck out of here? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that's what we started with. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stupid, right? But um, imagine assigning, like, there's other, there's other things you can do that, that provide you nothing but pleasure. Eating cake, for example. So imagine assigning some kind of, some kind of moral authority to the act of eating cake. 
Like if you eat too much of it, you're a bad person. Well, really? That doesn't make any sense, right? <laughs> so if you're two consenting people, there's nothing you can do that is immoral, in my opinion. Yeah. There's, that just doesn't make any sense. That doesn't register with me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get the whole anti-gay shit. That doesn't make any sense. No, well, I just, I has. think using, using a faith as an excuse, I think is, it, is well, arbitrary. It's, all, it's, it's it not is, a yeah. good, but that's what human nature loves. They love being told that it's okay to hate. A lot of people want, I mean, it's like your friend that comes asking you for advice and you tell them your advice and really what they wanted to hear is you telling them it's okay for how they already feel. They didn't actually yeah. want any They just wanted, ref- they want validation. That's validation, it. Yeah. yeah. And that's some people want that. And it's all again, based on fear. You're afraid of people that don't look like you. I tell this uh, story all the time. It's an analogy. If you grab a bunch of uh, regular black ants and a bunch of fire ants, and you put them in a jar together. They will just fucking move around each other, build their shit and hang out. Nobody will do anything. If you shake the jar, they will start attacking each other because they think the other party that doesn't look like them did it, but they never stopped to think about who shook the jar in the first place. And that is where we are in American politics. I've been saying this for two fucking years now, and I'm luckily people are finally starting to listen in, in, in mainstream media, but. Did you know with Black Rifle Coffee's Coffee Club subscription, you can get fresh coffee shipped to you every month? What? You don't even have to go to the store. Whoa. You don't even have to leave your bed. What? Wow. How did you get in here? You might want to go ahead and join the Black Rifle Coffee Club subscription before one of these guys shows up at your place. Divide and conquer is a phrase that existed for 6,000 years now. Divide them and then conquer. Right. Divide so if, so, if someone is trying to divide you, they're trying to conquer you. That is it. If, if, it's, if, you're, if you walk outside and water's falling on you, it's raining, buddy. But this is, <laughs> this is how it works. So we need to start asking the question, who's trying to divide us? We who's know shaking the jar? We know who it is. It's politicians and the media, right? Yeah. And you ask why. Pre bono, who benefits from this? Big you industries. Yeah. Tech, people pharmaceutical, that want, people that want control, and like we've consumerism. Some, somehow we've made healthcare into a partisan issue. Yeah, the idea that we live in the richest country in the history of the world. The the idea that we shit in our clean drinking water. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. We we live in the the richest country in the history of the world, and we tell people that they can be as healthy as they can afford to be. That is, I can't think of anything more unethical than that. And it's become a partisan issue. The left wanted it because they want to give away free shit. The right didn't want it because they don't want the government running an industry. And I don't blame either. One, yeah. I don't blame either side there. I, I, the idea that we would have free healthcare is nonsense. But I do think cut the insurance companies out. Yeah. Regulate pharmaceutical industry. Spend the same amount of money, and everybody gets great healthcare. Doctors yeah. still get paid well. Yep. Keep the government should be nowhere out near this stuff. Yeah. Nowhere near it. I got it. The government should not be anywhere near it, but universal health care isn't intrinsically linked to the government. We everybody should have access to good health care the same way they should have access to fucking clean drinking water. And we have the money to pay for it easily if we cut out these middlemen and stop letting pharmaceutical industries charge us thirty dollars for a fucking Tylenol. Well, you know what I mean too. Would, what happens if you started peeling away the the kind of Visor over how many of these companies you used federal money to achieve finding cures, finding yeah. finding vaccines, finding oh. all this. How and then that is then billed back to the yeah. same people that paid for it. Yeah. The only the only righteous guy in this was was the guy that invented the polio, polio yeah. vaccine that said, "No, this is this is yours." Yeah, he he charged the government uh, his lab fees, which were about six thousand dollars, I think. Wow, and that would be worth. Four billion dollars, right? That's insane. Yeah, but that's what a good person does. You don't you don't profit off of the misery of other people. We don't believe in that. That's why at Black Rifle we never fucking did commercials or anything on Memorial Day. It's not about yeah. that. That's it. Like I even just had I just had another conversation with Matt about that a couple of weeks ago. Like, yeah, I'm, I just again every year when this comes up, I just want to say again, I appreciate the fact that we never did that because fuck that shit. That's awesome. Um, but um, it's you know. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, but look at the, look at it's, it's, if you, if you just peel this back and I'll take Ibogaine as an example, you know, mm. Ibogaine traditionally was used to treat addicts on it, on, on cocaine, really? hard cocaine. I didn't know that. Uh, yes. That's, that was its, its actual application was 
it goes in and wipes out your addiction receptors or, or it hmm, makes or, a lot of sense and, and, and starts you with a clean slate. Yeah, yeah. A 20 year heroin addict can do an Ibogaine, a flood dose of Ibogaine and never touch heroin again. And he will never go experience uh, withdrawal symptoms. Well, I can tell you because why it, it wipes. I can tell you why the pharmaceutical industry would be afraid of that. Because the methadone market, yeah. number one, if you take it, there methadone are, there are three different drugs that if you're coming off of a heroin addiction, they get you on methadone for upwards of 10 years. And then you walk from methadone to another and walk from another to another. Suboxone so, is the last one. So you but are meth- on drugs methadone to get off drugs. for <laughs> Methadone is to heroin what uh, 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 Adderall is to meth. It is like this close away. And for some reason, but here we are branded as a yeah. treatment instead of a drug. And, and, now and we okay. sell it. We put a price nonsense, tag on it. Yeah. It's like, this is fucking nonsense. Can we talk about uh, the, the jab on this show? Or are you guys sensitive to that? I don't want to fuck up your game here. Oh, I don't care. Okay, um, so I mean, we're just the reason we got deleted. We got one one show deleted. Well, I'm not going to say anything that's controversial. <laughs> I'm just going to repeat some facts. The, in my opinion, the reason that there was such a huge push against uh, zinc and hydroxychloroquine and all this other stuff is because right now, it's still cheap. today, well, that's part of it. But right now, still today, uh, all of these uh, shots are under emergency use authorizations, yeah. right? Yeah. And you cannot. So they have not been cleared by the Correct. FDA. But the FDA and CDC will not allow, there's a, there's a legal barrier in place. If there's an active treatment for it that exists already, you cannot use an EUA for a vaccine, right? Yeah. That's why. That's oh, wow. it. It's all about money, right? Yeah. Because Pfizer made $6 billion in the first quarter last year. Or this year, I'm sorry. Wow. Yeah. Billions of dollars mm. have, have been made on that. That's, that's really what it's all about. Well, so- you I was know, never surprised. I mean, no, we all knew it. It is what it keep is. Keep him sick. Yeah. Keep him, keep him weaned, you know? Yeah. Well, so, back to you. Yeah, you, back to me. you, you left seminary school and went into the army at 24 well, years old. No, you went to another college first because yeah, yeah. you got a computer network security degree. Yeah. I figured, uh, I, I was, I decided at that point. I think you it was, graduated. It was, yeah. It was 2003. I decided like, I'm definitely going to join the army. Uh, what else do I need? before I do that to make me successful in life. And I figured a, uh, a tech degree, specifically one that's security-based, would probably be a good idea because you can just understand how those apparatuses work. And that's what I did. And so then- uh, Went to school for computer networks. Yeah, for two security. years, yeah. And got an associate's degree in that. And then, um, then joined the Army. And uh, I think I, sh- I shipped out September the 21st of 2005. So I was 24 years old at the time. Yeah. Everybody was younger, but it made it easier to be honest. Yeah, I mean, because you just, yeah. I remember, uh, basic was not having a 23 year old NCO was easy for you not to have be on their radar. Right. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, all I have to do is do this right the first time. All yeah. right. Cool. Yeah. It's pretty easy. <laughs> and then I, you know, get to your unit, it's the 82nd. So it's, they're pretty, I, I, I still remember the first safety brief I got, uh, from Mickey Ross. Uh, oh God! I love yeah. <laughs> for some calling, Ross. calling everybody fucking penis all the time. Uh, I love that dude though. He the first the first speech he gave, and it may have been for the new guy's benefit, but I got the sense over time that he just said this kind of stuff all the time, regardless of who was there, because there was only three of us that were new to the unit at the time. But he said something. He the, he always had this one quippy phrase like, "Don't drink and drive. Don't drink and smoke. Don't drink and fuck. Don't fucking drink or some some or don't drink and swim, not smoke." Something like that that he ended it with, but the meat of the conversation was something like, uh, there's some new guys here. Uh, uh, we don't do hazing and bullshit just by double volunteering and deciding to come join this unit. They belong here. And I'm going to tell you this as well. If one of you gets into a fight and the others don't join that fight, you're in trouble. Not the guy who was in the fight in the first place. <laughs> It's that. <laughs> and that was the first message you got yeah, about from a, the 82nd. Yeah, you yeah. were like, Ooh, I like this place. Yeah. I mean, it was, uh, and then later on they went to explain, went on to explain the idea of the Elgot, the little group of paratroopers that is so infamous. I can't believe it's never been discussed like in band of brothers or anything like that, but basically an Elgot, Elgot, little group of paratroopers. When you do a jump, you find two other dudes and you go, you got 45 minutes to kill as much shit as you can <laughs> until you have to link up with your unit. And that's the mindset you have doing those operations because they're chaotic. I mean, you can see uh, uh, just by watching Band of Brothers again, you can see how fucking 
chaotic that jump was. Nobody <laughs> went where they were. Actually, the, I think the Australians or Canadians landed in the right spot, but that was the only one. That was it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I enjoyed that. Yeah, it was really cool. And then, you know, we did a train up. We fucking deployed. And that's... Uh, that was it. Yeah. It's where we met. Yeah. I remember the day. Yeah, it was... Um, I remember uh, meeting Will Kanda, well, who's we were, now a lieutenant colonel. Will, yeah. Will Kanda, infantry officer. We were on... Uh, Christmas leave, actually. We were on DRF-1, for those that aren't familiar. The 18th Airborne Corps, which is 10th Mountain, 3rd ID, 82nd, and a couple other things. But somebody in there is always on DRF-1, which means you're deployable within 18 hours, yeah. right? Uh, it's always an 82nd unit, though, because yeah. nobody else is airborne. And we, we have everything already packed yeah. at the yeah. lack. So we're on, uh, we're on Christmas leave. I think we left. We got the call on December twenty sixth. Yeah, we were. We, they said, "Hey, fire it up." Remember the like right before Christmas. I left town Bush on twenty third. Yeah, and he started talking about the surge. Yeah, so we were the first unit deployed the surge, and I met you at Taji on like it's, December the it's, fucking twenty ninth or thirtieth yeah. or something. It was yeah. right before the end of the it was, year. It was the twenty ninth because we. Well, yeah. After we met, we had a month. Almost on Taji because we didn't get trained up on the hair. Well, that was we when the 152 roll. radio first came yeah, out. Yeah. Nobody knew how to fucking Yeah, do you that. guys all got issued them and you didn't yeah. know anything about them. So I was uh, the company RTO at the time too. So I was like, all right, cool. Can you teach? Actually, we left one of the easiest radios of all <laughs> yeah, time to yeah. use. I'd once love you, that once thing. you get it. Yeah. We left for Callahan, I believe, February 3rd. Uh, it's February 6th. Sixth. So it's my birthday. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. I remember. I, I, I mean, there was some third. Was it third ID or third ACR unit helped us clear the yeah, building or yeah, some it was shit? Yeah, third ACR. ACR. Yeah, yeah we. I mean, I remember um, the company commanders and the battalion commander were going on all these helicopter flights yeah. over the city. They took me just on, to try to find on a one spot to go, like yeah. to just say, "Okay, what do you yeah. think of this?" And uh, and then they picked it, and then we planned. <sighs> You know, next to two in. main throughways, and uh, it's the tallest building in the area. Fuck yeah, let's do that. Let's get let's get in the biggest. I think target we could. I think we could have found a better spot. Jesus Christ, dude! <laughs> Maybe some high ground. And then we put you know, like I understand that we needed a lot of power, but we put those half million watt generators, and they were half as tall as the goddamn buildings right next to the building. Man, <laughs> we can afford more cables. We can't afford for all of our people to burn alive. <laughs> And it caught on fire after it got hit by fucking, the, was it the IRAMs that did that shit? I don't remember. I don't remember, man. I remember rolling in. But on like, f- February well, 9th, day three. Yeah. Right. That was, that was the death. The death blossom. Death yeah. blossom. <laughs> so uh, a couple of rounds popped off outside. Well, of they initiated with a, with an RPG. RPG. Yeah. yeah. That hit At the first. guard tower. Yeah. But it, I think they just hit the side of the wall. Yeah. It just hit the, it hit the building. Uh, and we went wild. Yeah. Well, like, I don't think they knew how many were of us were in there. Well, there weren't even, what were there, like 300 some people there? 350 maybe? No, there were six. 600? 600. Yeah. Because well, I saw 350 the, infantry. People. I saw the briefs every yeah. morning. So yeah, they were briefing like 656 or something like that. We had, yeah, we had, because we had FSC there and uh, who else was there? I don't remember, but we had, about, I think it was like 350 shooters, something like that. Yeah. But that was. Well, you had two companies, two yeah. full companies and then vehicle well, company, which was Delta. Because you guys didn't have it. Alpha. Oh, Alpha stayed back. No, no Alpha, went no, to, Alpha uh, was on Task Force 515. Yeah, they went to, uh, right? yeah, that's where Callahan yeah. died. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, he died. Yeah. Callahan, who we named it after, yeah. died he two died months like prior. A, yeah, about, a, yeah, what was it? Was it November? Task Force 515 or something like that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they were, that's what, that was the deployment we were all supposed to go on, but they peeled us off. Yeah. Anyways, so we just had Bravo Company, Charlie Company, and then Delta. Delta was then, over at Cop Ford with uh, well, they didn't, Second Platoon. Yeah, but Cop Ford, we didn't split until like May. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so anyways, <clears throat> took a couple of rounds and we just lit that whole fucking place on Everybody fire. got to a window and yeah. fucking rolled that out. That was before we had sandbags in the windows too, nope. so it was, we were just like shooting. Get to a window. And- it was basically like 360 degree fire. Yeah. But there was also some dumb shit. I don't know who was down in the parking lot area, but some dude threw a grenade short of the wall. And yeah. like, Somebody shot an AT4 yeah. <laughs> off the roof. Like That's hilarious, by the way. <laughs> I mean, I if, mean you're gonna if, I had the, if I had a Carl Gustav or a fucking AT4 and I was up there and there was no supervision, I definitely would have shot that thing. Hell yeah. We were getting shot at from the direction of, because I was, I, I remember I initially was right next to Captain Westbrook mm-hmm. and Captain Westbrook moved right into the position I was in and around hit the, hit the wall right next to him. As soon as, as soon as he moved into my position, you, like, <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. that was, that was pretty wild. After that, we had kind of a reputation. They never tried to come directly at us no. again, but we got mortared pretty much every I, 90 minutes. Yeah. I, w- I would say every 90 minutes for about, 
what, four 11, months. 11, well, you were gone after that, but it was, it, it extended out yeah. to the end. And then we had that. <clears throat> they would poke us in one shape, way or another, yeah. every hour and a half. Yeah. Like, I think it was just to keep <laughs> us off guard and keep us chasing our tails, to be honest. Yeah. Cause every now and again, they would, well, I mean, so there was the, the, uh, Rocket attack, Katusha rockets. Yeah, that one. That one was, that was rough. It was like 30 rockets into the side of the building. 107 millimeter Katusha yeah. rockets but right even into that the one, side of the building. Even that one didn't really scare me that much because it all happened at once. Yeah. it was. The, I couldn't see. I was in the stairwell. Yeah. It was the IRAM thing, like the propane tanks full yeah, of Yeah, when they C4, came in with Because the, they were just like, boom, boom, one after another. And the entire building was shaking. I'm like, fuck, because we're on the third floor yeah. of a four-story like, building. going to bring this like, bitch down. If it, there's what you're going to do. You know what I mean? <laughs> nothing. There's nothing that's like, I'm not Samson. I can't fucking hold this building up. So, yeah. you know, we had, but for the most part, we lost a couple of guys. But yeah. we we dominated Ford, that Ford space. Ford and uh, Tom Zach. Ford, Tom Zach. Uh, uh, oh, God damn. Vanek. And uh, Grader, Cody Grader, were the oh. four dudes we lost. Had a couple other dudes get fucked up. Some dudes got fucked up and ended up dying later. But Derek White combat, was there. Yeah, Derek got shot through the knee on a raid. I was yeah. actually about 200 feet away in a blocking position mm-hmm. when that happened. And I'm screaming. Sitting in I'm the like, truck. Yeah, I'm like, fucking let us. Taz, I knew you had to hold your position. Like, why? This operation is over. <laughs> we got a guy down there and the fucking building's already been cleared now. So what the fuck do you want us to do? The guy's in custody. Get him the fuck out of there. He sat there for 30 minutes with his leg split in half. I was so fucking pissed. I was screaming. Singer house had to calm me down. He's like, I understand what you're saying, but this is how it's going to be. Anyways. Oh yeah. Well, what, what was funny is, is it, I kind of want to tell people the dynamic is like your company commander, Will Kando, mm-hmm. like when he introduced me to you, he mm-hmm. was like, you're going to love my RTO. He's, he's a 25 year old private that has two, two college degrees, speaks most of a foreign language and, and is a total fucking asshole. Yeah, that <laughs> and when right. I walked up to you, he goes, this is Dan Holloway. You had a fucking tomahawk, tomahawk in your yeah. hand. You're like, uh, uh, I'm bringing this because yeah. I'm going to get, I'm going to get me one with this. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> and, never. And, but never. it was your, the company commander and the first sergeant would listen to you when you would yeah. say, that's a stupid idea. They wouldn't be like, shut up, private. They go, okay, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. One of our, uh, one of our NCOs, James Price, uh, he, he was in Delta at first, but uh, Delta company, but he came over to Bravo later. He would frequently tell me that I'm the only private he ever saw show up that just talked to everybody like I was an E7. <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah, dude, but none of this is that hard. Yeah. Like if you're res- well- <laughs> respectful. Like, I'm going to say what I'm not going to, I'm not going to be uh, so afraid of the consequences that I'm not going to say something that might help us not die. Yeah. That's fucking stupid. Right. <laughs> and if you're in a leadership position and you're not willing to listen to people, then you don't belong in the fucking leadership position, to be honest. I mean, a CEO is not a subject matter expert in supply chain and marketing and R and D and all that stuff. He's a subject. He or she is a subject matter expert in being a fucking leader. Yeah. You know what I mean? And getting people yeah. in their divisions, the things, Put you in the, the right equipment and the, and the, yeah. and the, yeah. and the knowledge mm. to, to, to complete the mission. Yeah. No, it was, it was really funny because you often would tell Will, mm, I don't know about that. And yeah. he would, he would listen every time. That yeah. was the greatest thing. I mean, our planning meetings, you would be at our planning meetings. Yeah. Was that a, is not normal. No, I was for, a private <laughs> hanging out. The of company Italian commander, the S2, yeah. the JTAC. And the, and the company RTO to be in a planning meeting. Yeah. But this, look, we had a lot of success at the time. I don't know what happened after that. I mean, uh, statistically, but we sent more people uh, to triple CI than any other unit in the history of the war up until that point, right? So I think we had a lot of success. Now, fighting Jay Shalmati and then standing up the sons of Iraq who went on to become the armed wing of ISIS in Iraq probably wasn't a great, <laughs> great idea. I mean, you can't really hang your head no, on that success. No, we kind of, we kind of fucked that up, uh, <laughs> but it's not the first time, right? The Mujahideen no. turning into the Taliban was all us too. So <laughs> how um, much fun did we have <sighs> while deployed? Because still, we were not, we were not just keep it quiet. Good old boy. I mean, no, we were trolling the shit out of people all the time. I, I, Muqtad al uh, who, after whom, uh, Sadr City, as well as dad, uh, Sadr City's named, put all these the silhouettes, stencils of him. Yeah. of him, like going, shh, and it said, don't talk to the Americans, don't talk to the Jews in the Arabic. So we made the M 
The, the M682 Charlie. The Charlie. M682 Charlie cock stencil. Yeah. And it was just like a big fat <laughs> it was, head It was penis. folded up and tucked yeah. right behind your pack and you could pull it out. Yeah. <laughs> so I sprayed... I put orange dicks on like hundreds Every, of these. Everyone like, I saw. Of their God, yeah. cleric. Yeah. Like all over the place. Solder. Yeah. You drew dick drawings. Yeah. Dude, if you did something like that now. Oh, I would be, I'd get kicked out. No, man. I mean, it would cause an internet, like, uh, like the news would pick it up of, yeah. of soldiers from you? the 82nd Airborne drew dicks on, on, <clears throat> because they would frame him as a really nice person, right? Well, they did. Yeah. They called yeah. him a religious scholar. A religious scholar. When he was, uh, running for prime minister and he almost won. Like he's the leader of that part of the party. And if they had won enough votes that they were like, that's how it works over there. If you're, if your party wins the most votes, the leader of your party becomes the, the prime minister. Right. So he's, <laughs> he was this close from being prime minister of Iraq after yeah. all that shit. Uh, but yeah, we had a lot of fun. We made those hearts and minds videos, which we still can't make. You public. still can't fucking let those leak. Not until everybody is out. That had, like, <laughs> then are you having a field day and just yeah. doing a watch party? Yeah. Who's the only one in remaining? Well, Will's still in. Yeah, he is. And a bunch of other people. Uh, well, no. <laughs> but Chris, Will Chris doesn't know, didn't out. know about them. No, he didn't. The only thing he was ever involved in is when I was pissing into that river. And he was like, uh, yeah, Specialist Holloway's over here cleaning up the rivers. <laughs> Because we made that video about, Welter made that video about uh, all those American-made trash cans all yeah, over the place. That, 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 he like they, they, starts on the trash can and it pans over to a giant pile of trash right next to the trash can. Like we spent <laughs> like $30 million on trash cans at Baghdad and they just threw their garbage in the oh, street. Oh, dude, anyways. we filled the water balloons up with chem lights oh, yeah. and launched them at the striker Coke, platoon. Yeah. That pissed them off. Well, they wouldn't shut the fuck up, man. They were loud as shit. Like we were, and look, they didn't know, but we were in our own rotation. We knew when and where we needed to go get sleep because of how, like the operational tempo. And they came in and disrupted that and disrupt a soldier's sleep. Not a good idea, right? <laughs> People get cranky. That's like letting your girlfriend uh, go hungry. Yeah. Like you just don't do that. You just shit. don't do that. Uh, yeah. Anyways, <clears throat> you, you ended up heading over to uh, old mod to, I went uh, to Krispies. Krispies unit. Unit. Yeah. yeah. Two six. So, so I left, you guys finished the war and then you came home and moved in with me. Yeah. We lived together for about a year. And the only thing you hung on the, on the wall in your bedroom was the warrant for your arrest. For manufacturing LSD, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just thought it was funny. <laughs> it's just like one of those weird things. It's like you, sometimes you, I didn't, it's not like I was proud of it or anything, but you do stuff for the story sometimes yeah. just because it's well, crazy. I mean, they had to let you go completely. Yeah, well. <laughs> We Anyways, lived together. Yeah. We, lived we together had a lot of fun. We, lot that of was fun. our first like trolling on the internet. Like we had popularity on the internet back then, yeah. by the way. We were, we that were, was 2007, 2008. Yeah. yeah, we were. We would join like these community sites and dating sites and just troll the fuck out of people. I mean, all these community buddy pics. Nobody knew how to like, make videos and stuff back then, but we were already yeah, doing that. So we had it was videos. Like, we were yeah. doing the talk box stuff. Yeah. We would, people, <laughs> people didn't believe that we were the actual screen names. Yeah. Remember when we put the first video out, they were like, this is no way that this is you because we had a, we had a doped kitted up AR-15 and this yeah. is like before this was a thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, like having an AR-15 with a rail Irons, and, and, and like a, it was a rock river, rock but we river, had yeah. like the cool grip and a nice yeah, yeah. sight and like the laser and everything. Yeah. And they, you know, it was like, <laughs> remember my, my, my name was hand banana and yours was arugula. Arugula. Yeah. <laughs> I still have arugula. That, that yeah. was your email address too. You know, it was from At uh, Gmail. <laughs> it was, it's a lettuce. It was from some, uh, <laughs> Tim Allen movie where there was a dog barking and it was Martha Stewart's voicing arugula over and over. And I was really high watching it one night. I was like, I'm going to start using that. That's funny. I don't know Just, why. <laughs> Stupid. But anyways, yeah, we lived together for a while. We invented the atom bomb, which is uh half of, or a full ounce of Everclear and a full ounce of wormwood acid. Yeah. And nobody that, was ever able to drink you bought, more than three. You were the only person I knew that had any sort of money that was dispendable. Yeah. What word disposable, am I looking? Yeah. Disposable yeah, yeah. money. Like you're the only person I knew that could buy something. Yes. Yeah, like, so we were just like the first, <laughs> which was really weird because I would be like, we need a PlayStation. Yeah. Let's go get like, one. You're like, Oh shit. Like, I couldn't that. get a PlayStation. Yeah. Well, we did. <laughs> I bought that 50 inch plasma TV for yeah. like $4,000 on yeah. a star card and you bought the PlayStation yeah. and you and I had a, had Grand Theft Auto. It yep. was a PlayStation three We had Grand Theft Auto and we had a uh, Metal Gear Solid. Metal and Gear that was Solid, it. Yeah. Like that's all we needed. Yeah. And then, 
You mm. ordered, like, this was like one of well, the, the first, first times major, we- The first major purchase we made was a breathalyzer. Breathalyzer. Yeah. And then we- how fucked up we get. We sent my ex-wife to, to fucking school to learn how to be a bartender yeah. and then made her- <laughs> It was awesome. You, we kept, I remember it made sense we to got me. to 0. 0.13 and then I blacked out. Yeah, it did. It did. It made yeah. sense. It made sense. Yeah. It was, those were fun times. Also, we went to buy that shotgun that day. Oh, you got to tell that. I story. saw like, a, and I don't know if it was online or in the paper or something. It was an ad. This was. Yeah. Walmart was selling Mossberg 500s for like 250 yeah. bucks. I was like, Hey, let's go buy a shot. I need a shotgun anyways for. Because I need one. Fuck you. Yeah. Mind your business. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, you had that silver Toyota Camry. Yeah. Which was brand new. Yeah. Warranty still in. For, Extended car warranty already for, there. Yeah. <laughs> for, <laughs> you didn't get the phone calls. For whatever reason, I've never been able to not troll people. So as soon as we got into Walmart, I'm like, hey, you know what we should do is get a bunch of weird shit and put yeah. it in the bag. By the way, I'm like 22 get, years old yeah. right now. So we get like a bag of lime, <laughs> some ski mask, rope or chains. The ch- hacksaw. The hacksaw. Chains. Padlocks. Uh, padlocks. And then we go, we roll up to the fucking, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is real by yeah. the way. Oh yeah. Like, we, and I'm 23. You were what? 26? Like, <laughs> uh, t- uh, tw- I was, yeah, 26. Yeah. yeah I was yeah. 27 like, then. Yeah. Baby faced yeah. it two idiots. Yeah. Wearing corduroy jeans. Yeah. And then we, we go up to the gun counter and I'm like, Hey, I want to get one of those Mossbergs. And he's like, all right, cool. He starts getting everything out. He looks and, in the uh, cart. Yeah, he then he looks in the cart. No, it was a woman first. Oh, the she woman, went yeah, and got she had to the go guy. get the manager. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the woman was like, I don't think I can sell you this. I'm like, actually, you can. And I pull out my concealed carry permit. I'm like, I you like, don't even gonna, have to do a background. We're gonna check. make yeah, it yeah. faster, yeah. actually. She goes, and then and then she gets the manager and and you just go, show me a law that says I can't buy certain items with other items. Yeah, like you've got my ID now. If something happens, you'll know who it was. Like, <laughs> what the fuck are we doing here? <laughs> so I bought the shotgun. <laughs> I thought it was, I just can't. Oh, not, it's so funny. I can't not troll people. That was, I was laughing so hard that day. Yeah. Oh, uh, we started a <clears throat> wiffle ball tournament. Oh yeah, that was See, fun. We got league. those. We got those like <laughs> those big shop lights. Yeah, the shop lights that extend up to like 14 feet and yeah. put them out there. I, it was we, fun. We never made it through a full game because no. we just got wrecked. Yeah. But it we was just fun. Drink. And one of those nights, uh, Jeff Taylor was like blacked out talking to your the uh, air conditioner, the air conditioner yeah. outside. Yeah, yeah. He Jeff, Jeff Sourpuss Taylor, our yeah. buddy over there. We well, that's him. where I went next. I moved and you with moved him, in with him, and then you left yeah. for Florida. Yeah. shortly after yeah. that to go and down. That's to, when we separated for. Yeah. But I called you every three months. Yeah. Well, we never not, we never <laughs> didn't talk. Uh, but yeah, you went, you were going through your own journey down there. Yeah. Right. I mean, with you, that's about when you started 2011 uh, experimenting yeah. with some, some jumped into the uh, mind altering substances. And I, I remember you calling me the next day and like, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> And that, those are good times. And then, you know, I went on to- You got out uh, of the army after that for migraines, yeah. right? They freaking- uh, no, I just left. Oh. I didn't resign, but yeah, I was having really bad migraines at the time. <clears throat> um, so moved to uh, Madison, Wisconsin. Oh yeah, that's right. You were up there for a while. Worked first. in politics for a while up there. And then you uh, fucking got rage and said, fuck these guys. Yeah, I mean, I, I just kept seeing- <clears throat> Blatantly it, illegal acts. Uh, pe- <laughs> like the the people going into churches and and- proselytizing from the pew basically or from the from the podium i'm like hey man this is illegal as shit like the the church should lose its taxism status for what you're doing right now like i'm I'm not saying you can't talk to this community but technically speaking what you're doing right now is illegal and you're putting them at risk and they're like yeah that's just kind of how it's done i'm like oh man and then every new employee that we got was as the campaign got bigger was an employee from another campaign and i came to find out later that they were already working for us before that campaign was even over they're just like climbers just a, they're yeah, social climbers yeah. and I, I it was disgusting to me yeah. and uh, i i tell this i have this phrase all politicians are cunts and i really believe it i don't, I don't trust any of those people not not one bit anyways i love that phrase yeah moved to uh oakland california after that with my girlfriend at the time um, she was a political organizer for a teacher's union, uh, which is. <laughs> you hate the teacher's union. Correct. Yeah. I, I hate, <laughs> I hate any institution that protects shit. Incompetence. Right. So I yeah. like uh, the police union sometimes piss me off as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I, I understand why they take hard lines because people who are anti-cop will take everything and that you give them. So you have to fucking put your foot down sometimes. But anyways, so. In Oakland, uh, starts 
working in private security for, uh, you remember SMG yeah, yeah. back in the I day. SMG. So SMG, SOC, I, I worked, I was the, the uh, uh, manager of like workplace violence stuff and, and pers- close pers- personal protection and things like that and domestically in the United States. So I did stuff in DC a lot, uh, actually New Orleans a lot for some reason, um, down in LA, the Bay Area, Seattle, did a lot of cool stuff. Did bodyguard work for Petraeus for a little bit for uh, Elon Musk, a bunch of people for the energy secretary, uh, for Mimi Haas, the lady that was the owner of Levi's. I did Gap Inc. Uh, workplace violence. I did some stuff for uh, a bank, Wells Fargo as well. That, that was all fun, but it was just, like, ugh. it's just like a nine to five. You just yeah. grind it out. I'm like, I'm not getting any fulfillment out of this. Uh, so <clears throat> I had gotten another degree in security management from uh american he just got another one yeah from american military university fuck it and uh i already had two why not another one that was done in 2015 i think so i had three degrees at that point and then i got i applied to the uh homeland security program penn state and i didn't take the gmat or any of that shit like you're supposed to you have to take a test to show that you're smart enough to be in uh in, a in, state employee in graduate where school the, where the dumbest like, people yeah, hide out. Yeah. No, but you have to, you have to take a test to prove that you're capable of finishing uh, a, a, master, a program. master's program. Yeah. Right. So I was like, yeah, I'm not, I just called him like, Hey, do I really need to take this? They're like, yeah. What do you mean? I'm like, I mean, come on, I'm, I'm going to pay you. Yeah. Right? So it was like, I'm offering I, you money. Well, I mean, I, I just negotiated with him. I'm like, look, I don't want to take this. My, my GPA from the other three degrees I have, Should which are not, yourself. which are not, easy degrees is three, nine, seven right now. Uh, they were like, well, sometimes people write a paper in lieu of that. I'm like, all right, cool. What if we just have a conversation? What if I come there and we just have like a 45 minute conversation with the Dean of admissions and then we'll see after that. So I did that and they let me in that day. (laughs) So you, you just punked your way into the program. Yeah. But I think that's probably, I bet the Dean liked it. Like, did you have him fucking rolling or what? Uh, he was, he, he seemed to enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it's, what did you guys talk about? Uh, I talked about everything. He's, he's like, what are you hoping to get here? And I just start launching into these like very in-depth analysis of current world affairs and stuff like that. And he goes, Oh, what's your uh, background? Cause I don't think he took it that seriously. And he started reading that I was in the military and, and studied religion, all this stuff. And, uh, I guess I said the right stuff. I don't know. Cause it worked out in the end. And I finished that one in what was that? Sixteen. Uh, it's, it was a master's degree in uh, homeland, international homeland security with a primary focus in border security. Wow. Which You're a border expert. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Good Lord. There's a dog going crazy over there. Uh, <laughs> Got fucking dog going crazy. <laughs> yeah. So I went to work for immigration, actually. I went to work for uh, FDNS. Wow. You actually a, worked for immigration. Someone that can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Studied it for years and then worked for the organization. And I don't just put memes on the internet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, I, I, I specialized in border security, got that degree. Then I went to work for uh, fraud detection and national security at FD or at uh, USCIS for a while, but I was in San Francisco, right? Hated and it's, it. it's the ninth circuit there. So they wouldn't send our investigations out to HSI, which is Homeland Security Investigations, which is the, the 1811s inside of uh, ICE, HSI. So they wouldn't prosecute shit. The U.S. attorneys wouldn't because they were afraid the Ninth Circuit was going to create bad case law. They were just trying to get past the Obama administration and then retool after that, which they did, actually. And then yeah, reversed it. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah. So I got after a year of that, I'm like, fuck this shit, man. And I was getting ready. I also to was actually, hounding you a lot. Yeah, you had been hounding me for years. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, because you hated everything that you did. Yeah. Um, so who cares? Come do something fun. Yeah. So, uh, I was actually, I just gotten my security clearance upgraded to top secrets and I was going to take a job with one of the other agencies, ATF or DEA or some shit like that. And, uh, you called, it was right before, I think it was January of, no, it was, it was December. It was December of, 16. of, uh, 16. Wait, is that right? Yeah. yeah December right. 16. And I, I just came out to SHOT Show. And met in with January. Evan. Yeah. Yeah. In January, I think it was the 17th of January, something like that. And, uh, Evan was like, so Jared told me X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know how I fit into all this. He goes, well, marketing is basically intelligence work. That's why we're all good at it. <laughs> Cause this is what we've been doing for years, right? We just figured out a way to turn 
figuring out what people want and how they think into a productized uh, thing, Shit, right? It, you know what I mean? We're, the, we're our first customer. Right. Yeah. So April yeah. 17, I'm there. April 1st, 17. Yeah. I'm in Salt Lake City working for Black Rifle, just in the marketing department. We had some uh, turnover. Some weird shit going yeah, on. Yeah, there's plenty. There was a lot. There and was a lot I, going on then. Then I took over the marketing department from the ministry. I was the VP of marketing for a while. And Evan put me on the presidential board as we started to retool the company and stuff. It was really interesting. Um, we had a really good time. I mean, it was stressful getting all that stuff worked out. And at the same time, we were preparing for uh, uh, the investment phase, right? Yeah. Series Where the B hell did you phase. live in Salt Lake? Um, over near the fucking, the heroin place like down next to the basketball stadium why can i not remember your house it was right remember that big concert venue where we went to see oh yeah like it was right across from there okay i don't remember the name of the street or anything but Fuck, i can't yeah. remember man it was boring over there for the most part except for the, it was right next to that zombie land did area. i ever go well i think the only time you ever came over there was when uh, no, we did mushroom there. No, we did them over your house with Benny. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I'm like, I, no, we, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember where con- you live now. Yeah. Concert, where it took, right? yeah. It, they like completely, the zombies took it over. I, I remember now. Well, yeah. the zo- the zombie, we never hung out over there because no, we, we didn't like that place, area. No. Yeah. No, cause I, the zombie place, I mean, it, there were super nice apartments, but the zombie thing was like one, yeah. it, well, it's like two blocks over, was, but they were everywhere. Dude, that was a weird time. block because I was like, yeah. how do I not remember? Oh yeah. yeah. I they tried that. to fence it off and stuff. Yeah. The cops just were not prepared to handle any of that. Anyways. And we hung out at Unicorn a lot. And yeah. We did. Yeah. Benny's place. And just at the studio. Yeah. I mean, I've still got that video of me, you, and Jason Rouse sit like blacked out <laughs> in the old studio in Salt Lake, and he's playing all of the Breaking Benjamin and songs he's, and he, shit. all while recording yeah. the new album. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty wild. So yeah, we continue to progress there, and then, um, you know, I mean, it's the company grew fucking fast. Yeah, faster than anybody I think anticipated. Brought on some new people. We came here. Uh, I I I was the first person to move to San Antonio actually just yeah. to start looking for office space and stuff and then we got set up at that place. Uh, yep, and Grandma's house. Grandma's house. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was not a lot the of place. a lot of parties at your place here in San Antonio because we practically yeah, lived there that, that first summer. That like pool, we'd go to the pool. Was we'd it buy summers. The, was that was eighteen. That fucking place. Oh. No, I mean the name. I don't remember the name of the complex, but it was yeah. that that pool was great. Yeah, we did a uh, lot of fucking fun yeah. shit there. We yeah. we got a new PlayStation yep. and bought every game that you and I wanted. Yeah, and then that's what we did for about yeah. a month. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then we because had, no one uh, was here first. Remember, it was just yeah. you and me. It was me, and you, Richard, Joe, Richard, and that was it for a I while. Think that was it. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, Candace was here too. Yeah, yeah. It was me, you, yeah. Candace, and and Joe and Richard. But anyways, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, that, those were fun times. And then um, as the company got bigger, I think we all collectively realized that a lot of the th- day-to-day operations things we were all doing were outside of our area of expertise. Scopes. Like we, <laughs> yeah. we needed a real marketing. CMO. A CMO. We, we needed a real data marketing person, yeah. which is Molly. She's yeah. amazing at that shit. So when that- yeah. We needed uh, real supply chain management people, yep. right? Because look, not not for lack of trying, but there's a reason you need experts you, yeah, once you can afford the experts, the experts guess, yeah. too like you have that you have that right. time frame so i was kind of a i would say free agent but i was doing a lot of side projects and stuff during that time between like january of 19 yeah. and the summer and then we decided for a variety of reasons that drinker bros and black rifle had this i don't like well, the word split because it's not what i wanted was. i i liked what i remember telling you to come be a be a host with me and you hated the idea yeah. first you were like there's no fucking way because you hate the attention yeah you were so against it but i was like people are gonna love you <laughs> like i have to that's what i kept doing i had to share i had to share this that i always had i always got years of entertainment yeah. of and no one else knew what i because i used to have to tell everybody about you right. and then oh dude he's the funniest guy ever mm-hmm. you and really smart but I don't know how to explain it. Just hang out with him. Well, I mean, it's, you know, I appreciate it. I appreciate that you pushed me into it because I do, I do have well, a you, lot of fun. Yeah. You, once you got into it, I the mean, attention shit. stuff is still rough for me, but I st- I do enjoy the doing sports stuff. though. When you dove into the sports and mm. really took off with sports, like yeah. that was, that was huge. Mm. And now you have this skill <laughs> that very yeah. few have, by the way. Yeah, It's, it's, like, uh, it's not, I, I challenge you. 
people that look at this and think it's easy, just go have an hour long conversation with yourself and and record it and then send it to me. (laughs) And we'll see. I mean, some people are naturally good at it. Some people struggle. I've struggled at times and it's, um, you know, you, you do, you got to do enough research that you know what you're talking about, but not so much that you're just going down a bulleted list of facts. Well, when you have guests, understand who you're having and listen to what they're saying. Ask smart questions. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's, because we have a, a bunch of huge, I mean, we've had the biggest guests on the planet, I guess. I don't know, yeah. other than the Pope or the president, who we're going to have on bigger than Matthew McConaughey, right? Yeah, Especially no, in Texas. I think, I think that's it. Um, but yeah, uh, once we uh, divided all that stuff up, and now you guys have this show, which is doing really well. It's just, we, we, like, we wanted to be able to fucking continue to go out onto the fringe and be super crass and funny and also kind of political without drawing heat onto a fucking Another brand. massive it's company. so easy. You know what I mean? Like, there's no point, there was no point keeping it together at that point. So, uh, yeah, and we've been growing ever since. We've got new shows with Chuck Liddell and Adam Ray on there. We've, I think we've got like 12 or 13 yeah, shows just, on the network now. New shows every month yeah. are coming out. Mike the Cop just started a show on there called... Uh, uh, I heard I might be getting offered a new show over there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Soon, actually. Uh, it's it's uh, Drinking Bros God, Drinking is, Show once a week. What is the name of the show? You know, we always did want to do that. It's like I, circle I back. I, I think we should. And just get hammered once a week. Food show. Uh, <laughs> what is it? I got to look up the name of the show. How so many, right. How many times in the last 15 years of your life have I annoyed you? Uh, every single fucking day. <laughs> failure, failure to stop is the name of the show. Yeah. We we change it at the last minute. It is Mike the Cop's new show? Yeah, Mike the that's, Cop and Eric Tansy. It's one of my prized abilities. Yeah, putting to people get, together. That's no, your, to get you to lock up and and be, you know, kind of like that scene in basketball where who's Ty Cobb? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're, you've uh, I do it on purpose. I, you've been intentionally mispronouncing words for years. <laughs> to piss me off <laughs> and it's like uh you i'm sure you've seen those videos the on yeah. <laughs> i'm sure you've seen those videos on instagram where that dude uh constantly trolls his wife like he just goes like this on his story and and says something super dumb dad joke or something like that and she's like oh my god shut the fuck up yeah that's basically what our relationship has been. Well, I also will say we've science done, wrong. I'll say medical science oh, yeah. wrong. Well, you, I'll say you gravity up. wrong. Like, remember when I was trying to convince you that if I held you up and you picked me up, we would float? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not how that works. But we did. Uh, we've, 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 it's always been like that. It's like little brother, annoying little brother kind <laughs> of thing. It's the two brothers yeah. on Ocean's Eleven. Yeah, that's actually a good, it's, that's, uh, Scott, Scott Conn and Casey Affleck, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's actually, that's actually pretty much what it is, but we've never really had any arguments in 15 no. years. I mean, I mean, what's there to argue about? I don't know. I don't fucking like arguing, but now we do this and, uh, um, we talk, yeah. Phones. Talk for a living. I, we do a lot of stuff. people. I like, I've got another, other than Drinker Bros is another American show Party, called yeah. American Party. It's me and Dakota Meyer. And we, you know, we have a little fun on it just because we can't help ourselves, but it's, you know, we talk about important things too. Um, make fun of people, make the internet mad. Yeah. Make the internet mad. I, Which you guys don't care. You two no, don't care. Don't they, shit, no. And that's, what's funny about it is these dudes all, you know, I saw kind of the wave come out and it's like, it's like they're exposing you by reposting your public show. Yeah. Very public yeah. show that many people yeah. already saw. Oh yeah. my God, look what they said. And then yeah. you came back, you go, yeah, we don't care. Yeah, fuck I mean, you. <laughs> if you if you want to have a conversation about why you think I'm wrong about something and offer a solution that I didn't think of or something like that, I'm all ears. I love those things. I don't yeah. I don't give I, I attach no uh, 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 value to being right first. Um, yeah. I don't give a yeah. shit about that. It doesn't make any sense. Being correct is the only thing that matters. But uh, some of the stuff that happened, like we do we do fun stuff too that exposes things. Like yesterday. Uh, the show we put out was called The Many Murders of Hillary Clinton. Right? <laughs> so we just went down. That sounds really fun. Yeah, it was. We just went down all of the conspiracy theories about the Clintons over the years and just Gone looked, through at, everyone. looked at the evidence for yeah. each one of them. Like, oh, this one kind of seems fishy. This one is like JFK dying in a plane crash. It was a shitty day. Like the weather was super bad that day. What did they goad him into getting in the plane? That doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> Come on, yeah. get in the plane, like, get in the plane. Uh, you won't do it, pussy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
but it's like some of the stuff was pretty fun. But also, you know, we've tackled some serious issues like uh, this. We bullied Lindsey Graham into submission. Yeah. And we, got a law passed. Yeah. Well, we got a, we got a, uh, uh, the Ferris Doctrine overturned in the 2020 National Defense Act or uh, that Authorization Act. That's a pretty big deal. Yeah. That is a, a fucking, big deal <laughs> for a podcast that started in a garage. Uh, <laughs> We've exposed things like MVM Inc., uh, who traffics kids for the federal government all over the place, illegal immigrant kids. Uh, also, Southwest Key Programs, which has uh, made billions of dollars housing these kids. So an illegal immigrant kid comes in unaccompanied. What, what is happening today is that they're trying to find their family that's in the, in the U.S., but the, the family's just saying, we're not going to come pick them up because we fear being deported. So the families abandon the children, and then the children go... Uh, they get escorted by this uh, fucking shady ass MBM Inc. company and several others to Southwest Keys facilities, which are like abandoned warehouses and shit. They get paid billions of dollars. They've leased the buildings from themselves, from other companies they own, using federal money, paying 10 times the rate that they should be, just stealing money from the federal government. And the kids are being abused wholesale. And when they turn 18, they just deport them anyways. Right? <laughs> what the fuck? Right. So we're, we're putting... Guatemalan and Nicaraguan and Mexican children in prison basically for X amount of years and then kicking them the fuck out. And in the meantime, those companies doing are making billions of, of federal dollars. So stuff like that happens and I hear about it. I can't help myself. I'm going to say something. You yeah, absolutely. I mean? That's they, who we are. Yeah. And it, the, uh, w- one of the things we just did, <clears throat> there's an autistic kid, uh, dad's in the Navy, uh, his his mother, I don't think they're in Drinker Bros or in Maine, the new yeah. Facebook group, but somebody that is was friends with them and heard about it. They didn't like every, all the kids that graduated got signs, put in their yard, congratulations for whatever. And you know, whatever. I don't know if kids even care about that shit, but the fact that they didn't do it for the special needs kids because they were one-on-one instead of in a classroom is a fucking bullshit, right? So this woman reached out to the group and I'm like, hey, you know what we're going to do is We'll I'll, everybody record videos. I'll have our editor put it together, find a sign for him, and I'll fucking pay for it. And that's what happened. And then the same thing happened at Christmas last year. We decided, I some somebody I gave someone uh, some luck. They made a bunch of money and said, "Hey, I want to give you some of this money." I'm like, "Why don't you do this? Put it in a fund, and I'll match it, and then we'll get a like bunch of other people. Christmas presents." Yeah, we bought 160 kids Christmas presents that wouldn't, otherwise wouldn't have gotten. If you have any kind of power, whether it's physical power or organizational money, power, money, influence, organization, contacts, whatever it is, the, the purpose of power is to protect and provide. That's it, right? If you're using power for anything other than that, you're a piece of shit, in my opinion. Absolutely. And I don't, like, I, I, I've narrowed down the list of people I hang out with because of shit like that. Like, if your first instinct is not to help people, when you your first are in instinct is it, the dollar sign, yeah, then fuck you, man. I have no time for that. And it's, I feel it getting more prevalent. Yeah. Like more and more people like, like AJ Buckley from SEAL team and all the guys actually from SEAL team, Neil fucking Boreanaz, all those guys, uh, reach out, ask, Hey, how can they, I'll post something and I will get dozens of DMS from famous people. Now, how can we help? There's a lot of, there's a lot more people out there that are good people than you realize. Yeah. And it feels, it can feel overwhelming sometimes with everything that's going on in the world, how fucked up everything has been and is and has been for so long. And you feel like there's nothing you can do about it. And you can't end suffering, but you can end that motherfucker's suffering right now. Yeah. That one person. And if you don't do it and you can, then that's on you, right? So that's, that's pretty much where I am at this point in my life. I, I've got everything I need. <laughs> well, so, yeah. Now, now you're just getting a bigger <clears throat> platform to do greater things on a much bigger stage that right. will lead to helping more people, which is yeah. great, which is why supported a hundred and thousand percent. And ladies and gentlemen, this was Dan Holloway. Go see him at American party and drinking bros and, and all the other shows you guys are doing yeah. over there on the news, There's get your news over there. Yeah. And get a defund politician shirt. Oh, there you go. I like this one. This is my <laughs> favorite design I've ever made. <laughs> Although there's one called Don't Tread on D's coming out pretty soon. That one I think is going to be pretty good. If you guys would like 
any of the Drinking Bros merch, just head on over to drinkingbros.com. Mm. The store is back live. You can get uh, a lot of our legacy designs. Mm. We have the Drinking Bros Pornhub shirt. Mm. We've got uh, a few others that I lie about being vaccinated, yeah. which I think is hilarious. Yeah, that's really funny. Because yeah. <laughs> it just sparks some yeah. Karen. Yeah. I mean, it's Karen bait. If you buy the I, I lie about being yeah. vaccinated, you literally are going to bring the Karens to you and you're going to get yeah. your interaction that you yeah. ever so want. I recommend getting a body camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just wear that shirt and the body camera all the time and see how Just so is. you can get into those, yeah. those, those conversations. Well, thanks for joining yeah, us. Man. Everybody else, go find him on Instagram at D'Anthony. At Dan Holloway. D A N H O L L A W A Y. I always search D'Anthony because that's what you're in my phone is. I know. That's fucking Ross did that. Jackass. Thanks, everybody. Bye.